In the desert of Silithus lies a city, a stronghold now fallen, what a pity. A war long unfolded, a terror to behold, and now buried beneath the sands. But its armies never halted, the Karaji began their plot and would soon raise their high command. So I would advise you stay well rested, lest your nightmares be manifested. For the beast who sees all has been resurrected. Invoke the name of the old god, Cthun. Cthun! Cthun! <laughs> Welcome, followers, new and old, to my custom card sermon. Today, we will be celebrating the start of this year's Hollow's End with a custom set covering a terrifying and absolutely mad idea for a brand new Cthune card. Cthune of the Shifting Sands is a 7 mana, 6 armor, neutral hero card with a game altering ability. His battle cry completely removes your fatigue, replacing it with worships, and then drawing free cards as well. What this means is, after you play Cthune and run out of cards in your deck, rather than taking damage from fatigue, you will instead draw a worship that invokes Cthune. That's right, Invoke is back! A mechanic first seen in the Descent of Dragons expansion about five years ago has also been resurrected for this concept. But now, those of you who played back in the day with Galakrond are probably wondering, what does invoking do to upgrade Cthune? Well, you see, this is where Cthune differs from the Galakrond cards of old. While Galakrond had three different stages of his battle cry, each requiring you to invoke twice to get to each stage, Cthune does not have any upgraded forms. Instead, the focus of this Cthune and how it scales in power lies within the card's hero power. You see, just like with Galakrond, Whenever you invoke Cthune's hero card, the hero power is used. For Cthune, this means you trigger the ability Encroaching Demise, a 2 mana hero power that reads, deal 1 damage randomly split among all enemies, future uses deal 1 more damage. And now you can see how invoking Cthune comes into play here, as with each invoke, the amount of damage Encroaching Demise deals is increased by 1. Now I know what you're thinking. It's kind of hard to evaluate how this card would work, as you would need to see all of the different invoke cards. But man, that would be so many cards to make, especially because I would imagine each class would get like two invoke cards, and then there's the neutrals too, which is why instead of doing all that, I made an entire mini set worth of cards with three cards in each class and five neutral cards. Now for the purpose of this concept, I'm not tying this mini set to any particular expansion. So let's just say this is a direct-to-DVD, I mean, a uh, core set expansion. Okay, now let's go over some of those cards. The neutral cards of this set consist of the majority of Cthune's followers. Unlike Galakrond, where invoking more than four times wasn't really needed, Cthune only gets exponentially better the more his name is invoked. And thus, expect to see a good amount of invoke cards, with some that can even invoke multiple times such as this card, Twilight Successor, a free mana free four that invokes Cthune at the end of each of your turns. After Twilight Elder decided it was best to retire from the whole cult leader gig, mainly due to his hearing beginning to go, his favorite pupil took up the role of listening for the call of Cthune. Another one of Cthune's more odd followers is the ever resourceful Husk Collector. This is a two mana two two undead with taunt that invokes Cthune and uses discarded beetle shells to give the old god two more armor wherever it is. And finally, deep within the desecrated temple of Ankaraj, stirs the last of the Karaji's twin emperors, Veklor. With his twin brother slain by the same adventurers that killed Cthune, Veklor devoted himself to find a way to resurrect his master. After successfully raising Cthune from the dead, he now looks to reform his brother. Veklor is a 6 mana 6-7 six, with Taunt and Battlecry Draw Cthune. If you are already Cthune, 
craft and resurrect the other emperor. Functioning similar to Kazakis or Ignis, Vecklor, when played, allows you to build your own twin emperor. Vecnalash the Resurrected at a base is a 6-7 undead with taunt. You can then choose one of three different keywords to add onto him. Lifesteal, Rush, or Reborn. After choosing that, you can then choose a Death Rattle to give the Twin Emperor, with those options being Death Rattle, draw a card, it costs zero. Death Rattle, gain seven armor. Or Death Rattle, invoke Cthulhu. Finally, when both the keyword and Death Rattle are chosen, your crafted Vecna Lash is summoned onto the battlefield. Alright, now that we've had a look at the neutral support cards for Cthulhu, for the rest of the video I'd like to talk about the balance aspect of this card, as I feel it is an interesting topic of discussion that I think a lot of people will have different perspectives on, and I want to leave my own here. I'll also have the remaining of the class cards that I made for this concept cycling here in the background while I talk. Cthulhu of the Shifting Sands is by far one of the most challenging custom cards I think I have ever made. And so, when I originally made the card, I actually posted it onto my Twitter and Reddit to garner some feedback on the card in its original state. When posting it, the card was originally 8 mana, and I was under the impression that this version of the card may be too powerful still. And I actually got a lot of feedback saying the same. Mainly comparing the card to the old Warlock quest line, the Demon Seed. This is what I had expected, and so I immediately tried to come up with some ways to nerf the card or limit any kind of frustrations people had with it. But then something interesting happened. After talking with some other folks about the card and asking for their opinion, they told me that rather than the card being too powerful, it was actually too weak. And after some long discussions, I actually wound up agreeing. I'd like to go over some of the core balance concerns that I saw when I first posted the card, and hopefully explain them a little bit. The number one problem that many people had with this card was its comparison to the Demon Seed. And I want to start off by saying that is a totally fair comparison. The Demon Seed, for those who don't know, was a quest that's final reward allowed warlocks to redirect any damage they took on their turns to their opponent, including fatigue damage. This meant that there were some decks centered around drawing your own deck as quickly as possible and killing your opponent with your own fatigue. The Demon Seed was a very powerful card that was actually nerfed multiple times. Cthulhu's effect of replacing fatigue, of course, could then lead to a similar style of game plan. But the reason I think this is actually not as bad as it may sound is actually quite simple. The Demon Seed wasn't actually that good at winning games with fatigue. At best, the card was fair and offered an interesting win condition of using your own fatigue to kill the enemy hero. The reason the Demon Seed was so powerful and nerfed was because of the self-damage variations of the deck that focused on just playing Warlock's many self-damaging cards and killing your opponent with those long before you reached fatigue. Even still, I do think Cthulhu is a bit weaker at using purely fatigue as a win condition compared to the Demon Seed, due in large part by having the damage dealt by your fatigue randomly split among all enemies rather than directed purely at the enemy hero. Now, the second balance concern I heard from a lot of people was actually the opposite, in that the card was too much mana for no immediate impact. This was something I could really see as a major problem that the card had and one that I had the most trouble with solving. Expensive cards in Hearthstone pretty much always need to have some sort of effect that immediately helps swing the game in your favor. And in the cases that they don't, such as with a card like Deep Miner Bran, the card needs to allow for a massive swing the turns immediately following after you play it. Cthulhu, on the other hand, is quite literally the opposite. His invoke cards allow for little swings throughout the game, but Cthulhu himself is a big old do nothing card and his battle cry requires you to draw your whole deck before you get any value out of it. Finding a satisfying solution to this problem proved to be very challenging for two reasons. One, it felt like the problem stemmed from the core idea of the card itself. I wanted the card to have a cool effect that altered the game, but didn't immediately make you win, because if it did, then the invoke cards would feel pretty much pointless, as Cthulhu himself would just have won the game the second you played it. So having it be that you needed to draw your whole deck to make use of Cthulhu's game-altering battlecry felt really cool. 
but it caused this issue of having the card feel really hard to actually play at a high mana cost. The second problem came from the mana cost itself, actually. I got a lot of feedback suggesting to simply make the card cheaper, and I agreed. Having the card at 6 or so mana would make the card a lot more playable, but that arose a different kind of issue. I really didn't like the idea of having an old god be such a low amount of mana. I don't know why, it just felt wrong to me. These are such epic characters, they should have a high upfront cost. It was actually Dustin on the custom Hearthstone Discord server, who I spoke with at length about this card, who suggested having Cthune himself draw some cards, as he agreed that the card needed some sort of immediate value to play it. And having the hero card draw cards would help you get closer to fatigue quicker. I had actually kind of dismissed the idea originally, as I didn't like how Cthune could then be played in fatigue to immediately rack up some damage, but thinking about it, I actually found myself really liking the idea and finding it super fun and cool. It was the perfect way to add some more value to the card and keep that mana cost up a little bit, and so I ended on this version of the card. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and this concept as a whole. Kind of ended up being a bit of a design rant at the end here, but hey, that's kind of what this channel is about. So if you want to watch another video where I talk a whole bunch and dive into some of the sweet lore of the old gods, go check out mine and Makadog's Hearthstone Timeline video. We put a lot of effort into the video, and if you like Hearthstone related stuff, I think you'd really like this too. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Thanks for coming to this week's service, and I hope to see you all again very soon.